And we're live. Okay, good evening and welcome to the September 10th, 2020 meeting of the Haverford Township Planning Commission. Uh, Kelly, could you please call our roll? Sure. Mr. Capuzzi? Present. Mr. Reardon? Here. Mr. Poynton? Here. Mr. Shannon? Here. Ms. Dobbs? Here. Mr. Fierdemundo? Here. And Mr. Garrett? Here. Okay, everybody's here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. All right. Uh, please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank First item on our agenda tonight is a preliminary final minor subdivision plan for 1613 Pelham Avenue. And um, before we start on that, I'd like a clarification. And uh, I want to assume someone's out there for the applicant. Yes, thank you. Is the applicant Thomas Thornton? or is it a firm investment group LLC? Uh, I believe it's a firm investment group LLC. Uh, okay. For Tom Thornton as the managing member. Okay, so you guys have some type of uh, agreement of sale or something like that for this property, I assume. Yes, they own the property. Um, I'm just representing them through this subdivision process and then the attendance that I would construct. Okay. To, uh, and for the record, could you give us your name and address? Uh, Edward Gallagher, 1284 Cedar Grove Road, Media, VA, 1963. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, anyhow, Ed, are you going to speak or are you going to have your engineer speak? I believe Bob will address the plan, and if you have any questions specific to the construction or anything outside the purview of the engineer plan, I can comment. Okay. Uh, Bob, is Bob here? Yes. Bob Weir, yep. Hey, Bob. Um, I assume you received a copy of the review letter from Pannoni Associates dated September the 9th. Yes, I did. And I assume you're going to tell me that you intend to comply with all those comments. Exactly. Okay. All right. Uh, rather than go through this whole litany of comments here, why don't you pick out the ones you want us to have a discussion on or need some direction from us on? And then we'll, we'll ask you questions. Um, I don't think there's anything in there that, uh, that uh, I really need to get into. It's pretty straightforward stuff. Um, most of it, uh, yeah, I, I can, I can take care of just about everything on there. I don't, I don't think I need a discussion. Okay. All right. Then we'll, we're going to open it up to board to ask questions. Uh, Jack Garrett, is Jack, you there? Here. Jack's not here. I'm here. I'm here. You are? Oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> do you have any questions? Comments? Uh, I, I do not. Thank you. Okay. Maggie Dobbs. Maggie, you have any questions, concerns? I do. I do. Good. Um, okay, so I just wanted to talk mainly about the driveways. Um, so it appears lot two is having a little turnaround area, um, and then the new driveway for lot one will be moved to behind the house to take access off of Homestead Road. Um, so primarily my comments are because this is a uh, dead end street um, and, it, and it dead ends into a recreation area, um, I don't see why we need to have the, the turnaround area uh, for lot two. It adds impervious cover and I believe the engineer had noted that it exceeds the um, maximum width for driveways. Um, so considering that this is the the roadway, uh, well, like a lower classification roadway than Homestead, um, I, I think that uh, vehicles backing out of this driveway wouldn't have any problem with a lot of excessive traffic. 
Um, so the turnaround could probably be eliminated, which would help reduce some of your impervious cover. Um, the other thing uh, with the driveways is for lot one, um, the positioning of the driveway, um, I just have looking at, I don't see the length of it. Can you confirm what the length of that driveway will be? Just For lot one. second I'll bring it up on my other computer uh, no I mean that's okay so I'm looking at it and we see the side yard setback is 12 feet um, and it's about that distance and maybe a little more so I'm gonna I'm gonna guesstimate that it's maybe 28 feet you guess Maggie scales to 30 feet look at that <laughs> I'm so good um, so okay so 30 feet um, so, yeah, my, my concern mainly with this um, in part has to do with the actual dimensions of the driveway and just being able to fit two cars side by side there and having them be able to back out effectively um, because it, it does have the tapered um, curb cut entrance. But more than that, my concern has to do with the mature trees that are just to the other side of this driveway. Um, the property slopes up a little bit, and some of these trees are quite substantial. Uh, so my concern would just be the disturbance to the tree roots as a result of the construction of this new driveway um, and not knowing specifically what the grading of the driveway will be um, and where the tree roots are located. Um, I'm assuming, though, that they are definitely in this area um, of the driveway, so I, I just want to express my concern that the construction of this driveway to the rear of the property in proximity to those mature trees would cause uh, detrimental harm to them um, and possibly lead to um, their loss. Uh, and certainly we would have concerns with, with such large trees being disturbed um, in such a manner um, because of the, the uh, potential to cause property damage if they were to come down um, in a storm or the cost to, re to remove them. Um, on the homeowner's part. So, um, and then functionally speaking, I, I do also have concerns about where that driveway is located and what kind of property is left over for that corner lot um, when all is said and done in terms of functional yard space. Um, so they lose a lot of that backyard area, um, retain, I guess, some of that flagstone patio. Is that, gonna, is that going to be removed or is that, it also looks like it's going to be removed, is that correct? Correct, yeah. On to the side there. Um, so then uh, at that point, the, that particular property owner has, has limited space um, for any type of um, enjoyment of their backyard. So uh, I know based on where the property line is located, it's not feasible um, under this current configuration to put a driveway in the front. Um, but given that uh, Pelham Avenue is a lower class, of, I'm not sure if it's a lower classification road, but it has less traffic on it, I'm sure, um, being a uh, smaller um, sub out road and having only a few houses on it. Um, but certainly the, the lower traffic impact is going to be on Pelham versus Homestead. Um, so the impact of backing out into traffic is going to be greater with the proposed driveway location than if it were be relocated to the front of the property. So. Um, my recommendation would be if there's a way to relocate the property boundary in order to put both of those driveways um, in the front yards um, and to have that uh, backyard space reserved to uh, protect the integrity of the trees um, and to provide a, a greater living space, um, outdoor living space for the property owners of, of lot one. Um, and then finally, just the comment about the uh, tree replacement calculations. Um, I know that was another comment in the engineer review letter. Um, so just to make sure that we have updated calculations and input from the Shade Tree Commission um, on whatever those uh, replacement calculations are to be, and then um, installation of new street trees as, as appropriate. Um, 
And that, that pretty much concludes my comments. Um, and uh, finally, I'm not sure kind of what housing design you're going for, um, but this does look like a rather large house compared to other property nearby. Um, and uh, I, I do love the, the porch elements on the surrounding property. So if it's possible to put a porch element, um, I always encourage that to, to match whatever the community character is. And that concludes my comments. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jesse. My question is, and I, I emailed Kelly about this so we can talk it out on, on this call. So I understand that um, actually, Mr. Wager, your property is a historical listed uh, asset in the township. Um, and I believe that this property is in, within 100 feet, which would trigger historic commission review. Have you confirmed that? I mean, it, um, it scales within 100 feet from what I could gather from publicly available information, but I just well, wanted to put that out yeah. there. It kind of depends on uh, uh, what the, the parameters are for these measurements. I, I took a few. Um, the corner to corner of the, uh, the property, my property to that property is 113 feet. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. No, that's the other property. The new property line is 113 feet from my property corner. Okay. The existing property, uh, lot one, is 66 feet from my property corner. However, if uh, you're measuring from the house to the uh, property corner, from my house to the property corner of the existing lot is 97 feet, and to the property corner of the new lot is uh, 144 feet. Yeah, thank you for those measurements. So Kelly, what would, what would be, would that, um, I mean, I, I would think it's from, you said it's from the asset to the- To the boundary. The boundary. And it doesn't, it, this is kind of a- lot, lot one. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. Um, this is kind so of- no, a, I was gonna say, I, I, <laughs> I would assume it's lot one that is the trigger, right? Because if we're talking about the whole, the whole of it, not just the new property line, right? Well, I think, um, I think the intent of the ordinance is um, that if there's, you know, new construction, um, you know, whether it be land development, subdivision, um, that they're kind of assuming that all of it um, will be, you know, it be involved in some sort of construction activity um, that could potentially affect um, or damage the resource. Um, so I don't know that this particular situation where they're actually keeping that house um, and not necessarily touching much of that except for putting in a driveway um, it is really what the ordinance is meant for. Um, generally, I would completely agree and say yes, if, you know, from the resource, from the qualifying portion of the resource being the house to the property, the boundary of the property line is correct. I just don't know that necessarily, what was it, 97 feet from the boundary right. to the resource? No, not 97, 60 something. No, 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 I'm sorry. No, from the boundary of, of the Pelham lot to the resource itself, so the actual or house. 60-something feet. The other... A boundary to boundary, it was 67, right? 97. 97, 97. right. So we're talking right. about a matter of three feet in that regards. Um, and no, actually, the, the edge of the property is 67 feet. From boundary I to boundary. I don't think that we're talking, Kelly, all due respect, mm -hmm. and I don't mean to step on people, but... I don't believe that, um, I know in the past we've dealt with stuff that's got just two or three feet of the property is on it and it comes under the purview of, of a review from the, from the historical commission. I, I, I'm not saying that the new house, it, it, it is very different moment here, but boy, let's not make the terrible leap until we know whether or not what those legal ramifications are and i probably asked the township um, um, uh, uh, attorneys to to give us a, a ruling and if they think that that's outside of the purview then as far as i'm concerned it's outside of the purview but if they say no because 
this is a property, this one property right now, and you're asking to turn it over. Until that's happened, it's one property. I mean, that's kind of, you know, I helped write the regs for the, for the, and we put together, and I was the first chair of the historical commission, and I have to say, this would be a bit of a, it's going to be my question as well. No, but Chuck, is, was the intent of the ordinance so that a proper, a current existing resource wouldn't be damaged by the construction, and that's the point of the 100-foot buffer? Well, it's also that the value of the particular resource wouldn't be damaged, but it's also that, and to make a quantum leap the wrong way, we're not putting up an auto repair house across from an historic resource. So it's not a matter of damaging it physically by doing the work. It's a matter of destroying the, I'm going to say the word ambiance, and it's a wrong word, but of the historic place as well. But nothing, nothing within that 100 feet is changing. I really don't. Right. So if nothing within the 100 feet is changing, I just don't know that it's necessarily necessary. I guess you're right. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Last time I said an awful lot, I should have said two. Mr. Gallagher, would you be opposed to presenting this plan to the historic commission and asking them for any recommendations they might have? The issue is that it falls within Bob's house, which is less than 100 feet. It looks like there's some concern that the proposed development might have an impact on a historic resource, which happens to be Bob's house. Yes. So what I'm asking is, do you have a problem showing your plan to the historic commission and seeing if they have any comments or recommendations? Can that be done concurrently? Can that be done concurrently with the planning and the commissioners and subject to the final approval by the board of commissioners? Well, yeah, it can be done concurrently. The only problem is we have to make sure that the historic commission doesn't come up with some recommendation that impacts the development that you're proposing. So we got to do it concurrently, but we still have to wait for their recommendation before we make a recommendation. And do they have that authority to do that? I've never been up against this before. Yeah, they have as much authority as we do. They have as much authority as the Shade Tree Commission does. They make recommendations. Understood. And the board of commissioners takes their recommendations and decides whether or not they're logical or acceptable or if they're not. Okay. And do we know when that meeting would be? Kelly, do we know when that next meeting is? Their next meeting would be on the 21st. Next week? No, two weeks. Well, not next week, but probably. 11 days. 11 days. And we could be scheduled for that? Jesse, do you want to take that one? I'm not going to answer for the historical commission. Yeah, I mean, sure. I agree, and we haven't had a very light docket lately. So, yeah, certainly. And I know Stacey and Susanna were interested and curious about this when I raised it to them. And I think what we're trying to get at is that, you know, and to Maggie's point, you know, it would be those kind of things, looking at the neighborhood and not just plunking down a, you know, a standard house that we're seeing going up all over the township. I mean, this is a really, really nice little gem of a neighborhood, you know, with some beautiful old homes. And, you know, having some extra care. Not to interrupt you, but I would consider the home to be an enrichment of the surroundings. I built the home before I'm presently building it in Haverford. I have, not that it helps really now, but tall, stone-clad colonial. I don't know if that does it. Yeah, that's not going to work. I could email it to you. You can present. I want you to send that information in to Kelly so she can share it with the Star Commission, okay? Sure. If you have some ideas or concepts that you're looking at for that proposed house, that would be helpful 
in their deliberations, I think. Okay. Can I, uh, can I add something here? It says, it's my house. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, um, just a little background. Uh, the house was built in 1919 by my great grandmother. Uh, my family has been living in it ever since. Uh, we've had six generations living in this house. And uh, I think it was in 1988, I was asked if I wanted to put this on the historic registry or whatever it's called. And I said, yeah, because I wanted to, you know, do everything I could to protect this house. Um, I don't think this, this new subdivision and the house proposed is going to damage my house or the neighborhood in any way. Uh, if you're familiar with Beachwood, uh, there, there's some houses that have been put up that are questionable. There's uh, some old houses. Uh, there's a lot of old houses that have been torn down, which is unfortunate. But it's a very uh, eclectic neighborhood. And it's not like there's any kind of architectural standard that applies here. Um, so if you ask me, I, I don't think there, it, there's any reason to, to put this before the historic review board. Um, Bob, as the owner of the asset, I would think that your opinion may have weight well with the Historic Commission. Okay. Now, as, as the owner of property, you certainly can present your testimony to the board also. Okay. okay. Uh, Jesse, anything else? Uh, no, that was it. Okay. Uh, Rob. Uh, most of my questions were answered, um, and I'm not familiar with the neighborhood. I'm assuming that it's primarily uh, residential it surrounding is. the property. Yeah. Okay. There's a playground or a park adjacent to this piece of ground. Okay. The, it's called the guest track. Not too many people know about it, but it uh, it, it forms the uh, I guess it's called the southern boundary of the Hapford Township Little League fields. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay, David? Uh, no, my concerns have been mentioned by others, so nothing further tonight. Okay, thank you. Uh, Chuck Reardon, do you have anything else? <laughs> no, I, I didn't mean to open a can of worms, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to ax the, the, the project. What I'm trying to do is just to make certain that we, we proceed with a a little bit of caution just to make certain that um and and and, and i have to say Mr. Wager, i my family's had a home for four generations okay in the township for 70 years it's it's 150 years old so we've only had it for about half the time but um i know how how that makes a difference and so i'm not trying to um i'm just not trying to give you a hard time and i hope you don't feel that way i'm not taking that way thank you all right I, I, everybody else's questions have been wonderful thank you okay did i miss anyone okay uh, angelo could i oh sorry could i actually get one one more i just the, the, the the issue of the jet track keep coming up, um, I wondered since that would be the name of the township owned that, oh, correct? Correct. The guest track, yeah. So, I don't know, Kelly, I don't know, I can't yeah. recall another project when, since I've been on the board when we had a neighboring neighbor to the township. Does the township have any comments or concerns outside of Pannoni's uh, recommendations for as far as like buffering or anything like that mm -hmm. to the playground? Nothing has been addressed. Um, actually, the one thing that I did want to bring up was. Um, regarding the driveway placement um, that Maggie suggested was uh, at the zoning hearing board, we did have quite a few neighbors uh, come out um, and voice you know, their concerns with the project. And one of the largest concerns was, um, was that both properties have a driveway, um, mostly because of the parking that uh, happens along Pelham due to guest track and the little leagues. So I'm, wondering if uh, you know, maybe you know on the on the opposite you know spectrum of Maggie's thought is um, potentially putting an additional curb cut and taking away off-street parking on Pelham um, you know might 
be an issue as well. So. Um, also, I do have a um, one email um, from for public comment. Okay, I still get a chance then, don't I? Yeah, no, I just wanted to add that. Yeah. Uh, Bob, most of my comments are technical in nature. Surprise, surprise. Um, on sheet number two, I have a couple of questions about sheet number two. All right, the grading plan. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, you see where you have your sanitary sewer ladder coming out of the building? Um, on the uh, right hand side, up front by the garage. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You got a, uh, an angle in there that you need to have a clean out there. Okay, that close to the house, you need to clean it? Yeah, well, the, the bend in the line. I'm pretty sure the township code requires clean outs wherever there's a change in grade or direction. Okay, no problem. Okay, and uh, together with that, you'll probably have to add a detail for it, sanitary lateral clean out. Yeah, okay. Um, the ex proposed contour in the back left corner of the building, proposed building. Right. I think you have it labeled as 294. Should be 292. Yeah, in the middle of the houses. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. And and I share the uh, same concerns as Maggie as far as grading within uh, the drip lines of those two large trees on on lot one. Um, it it might be a good idea to have an arborist look at those trees and see uh, whether or not, you know, grading within the drip lines is going to have a detrimental effect uh, to the root system or anything or to the health of those trees, assuming they're healthy. I tried to stay as far away as I could and-, and I, I know, but they're good. big trees, so they have a large canopy. Right. Um, look at the detail for the seepage bed. Um, the cross-sectional view. Okay. Okay. Um, the, um, I guess it's an observation port or, or some type of, uh, feature that allows you to see whether or not the water has drained out of the seepage bed. It's, right. it's the piece that extends down to the bottom. Right. Okay. Can you put an exact dimension on that? that one of Pannoni's comments is that the, you have a dimension of five and a half feet for the depth of the bed, or it's really closer to nine feet, I think. All right. Do the math between the top. That's, that's going to, that's going to change anyway, because I mean, the, the PERC test showed that we, we don't have nine. We're going to have to spread the basin out more. So, Okay. All right. So my, my point is I want to make sure that there's a dimension that specifies that that observation port goes to the bottom of the bed. Yeah. It doesn't one, end up sitting up in the air or in the middle of the bed. There's a thing that says one foot minimum. Yeah. The bottom of the pipe. Too. It, it, getting back to the infiltration uh, test, you did t do those? Yeah. And you did them at the depth of 10 feet? No, we did them at, at another depth. That's why I have to have to spread the base now. We, at 10 feet, we, we hit bedrock before that. Okay. I, I was going to say, you, you would have a problem. You may have a problem with rock in that area. Yeah, it's a, this is a well-known in this neighborhood. Yeah, okay. Um, again, looking at that cross-sectional detail, it, it seems to apply that there's a pipe that connects the the area drained with the inlet. Right. But when you look on the plan view, that's not the case. Oh, it's, a, it's kind of, that's kind of a, it's a sideways kind of view because I'm, I, I think on the plan view, lengthwise, so it, it, it I need, I, I can clarify that. So. I think it's important that the, the pipes within the bed be interconnected so you get more of an even distribution of the water into the bed. The way it is now, most of the water is going to be coming in on the on the high side, the side closer to the house, because that's collecting all the roof drains. 
So I, I think it's simply just a matter of putting a couple of cross pipes in there to interconnect those two distribution pipes so you get an even distribution throughout the bed. Okay. Okay. Not a problem. So, um, and you also, uh, one of Pinoni's comments was you had to present your plans to the Shade Tree Commission. And Kelly, when did they meet? Uh, they are on the fourth Monday of the month. Fourth Monday. Okay. And that's what, the 28th? Uh, the 28th. Okay. So, basically, your, your next steps are go to the uh, Shade Tree Commission and to the Historic Commission, get their inputs, and then revise the plans and get them back into us so Pannonis can review them. And uh, our next meeting's in two weeks. I don't know if you can accomplish all that in two weeks, but uh, we also have a meeting on the second Thursday of October. So assuming all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed, we uh, probably could make some type of recommendation at that meeting. Okay. But it all depends on you coming up with a revised plan that basically addresses all the comments to the best of your ability. And, uh, you know, we take care of meeting with the State Tree Commission and the Historic Commission. Well, it, it, uh, it, it looks like I won't be able to make a, all the uh, necessary uh, additions and revisions until I get hear from the Historic Review and the State Tree Commission. Right. I'm not, it's not gonna, that's not gonna happen. This, there's, there's a lot of the comments that you can uh, take yeah, I care can of in the meantime. But I, you know, I can't submit for the next uh, planning commission meeting until I get all that stuff. Right, right. So I'll be I, the first one in October. I expect that you might be able to make it in the beginning of October. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, Chuck Reardon, not Chuck Reardon, Chuck Faulkner, you have anything else you wanna add, Chuck? No, I don't, Mr. Capuzzi. I think uh, I think everything's in your letter. Does anybody has any questions? Okay, uh, Kelly, was there any special conditions at the zoning board um, application? Nothing out of the ordinary, if I remember correctly. Uh, no, just that the project must, must be completed within a year in, a, in accordance with the notes of testimony uh, from the testimony provided at the hearing. Okay. All right. One one other thing. Uh, Ed Gallagher, yes. uh, most of the houses along Homestead Road that back up to the park have fences uh, along the back of their properties just to keep people from the park trans, trans, uh, running onto their properties. There's no fence along this section of uh, your property, and it might be a good idea to consider putting a fence in just so that you don't have anybody uh, wandering through. I'll certainly make that recommendation to Thornton's, um, but I see it as a good selling feature as well. Like you said, to keep wanderers out of your backyard. And, and the other thing is during construction, that seepage bed, it's going to be important that you have a construction fence around that excavation so that there's no accidents. The open excavation. Yes, exactly. Yeah, certainly. So that's going to be a significant excavation. Especially if you have to spread it out more than it already is. Um, and can I add that when you're putting a fence up against a public park, it is in the best interest of the safety of the children that that fence not be a solid fence, but something that one can see through so that the police, and this is just something for your consideration. But so the police, when they're making their sweeps, can look into the park and see that there's no bad guys lurking behind. So if you put up a fence along that edge, I would, I would ask you to consider putting up something that will allow uh, for the our, our our law enforcement people and concerned citizens in the community to be able to sort of police the community and make sure that the kids are safe back in the park. Just a thought, but it's something that we have uh, advised other developers to do over the period of the last five to 10 years. So just uh, a word to the wise, it would be a good idea. And Angela, I didn't mean to step on you, but you're the one who taught me that. <laughs> no 
No problem. Okay, um, Ed and Bob, thank you very much for. I being, had the public right? comment. Yeah, I mentioned just, it earlier. I'm sorry, public comment. That's why I mentioned it earlier, Angela. I, I sit right. And it's a long one, so okay. be prepared to listen to me. Uh, to the Planning Commission, my name is David Spears. My wife, Maureen Clackham, and I live at 700 Homestead Avenue, the only property directly abutting 1613 Pelham Avenue. One of the reasons we bought our house was the fact that there was a large lot next to us with two large 200-year oak trees on the Pelham lot, which had provided a lot of shade on our backyard deck for us, as well as the fact that there was a sense of privacy coming from the fact that there wasn't a large house visible right next to us when we were on the deck. Excuse me. <clears throat> the feel and experience of being on our deck in the afternoon has significantly changed since the new owner of 1613 Pelham Avenue cut down those two trees. We understand that it was the new owner's right to do so. Uh, while our preference would be that the subdivision not be approved and no additional house be built on the subdivided lot, we would at least request that the visible profile of the new house be limited, both by the allowed size for the new house and by the planting of a fast-growing tree or bush barrier to hopefully limit our view of the new house. We know that Section 182-713B of the Zoning Code says that when a lot is subdivided, the existing building and any proposed building must comply in all aspects with the area and other requirements of the district in which such building is located. As noted in the Zoning Board's notice of its hearing when the subdivision application was discussed, the existing house does not comply with the front and, front and side yard minimum setback requirements of Section 182-206 for a corner lot. So per that section, it appears that the subdividing and the building of a new house in the subdivided lot should technically not be allowed. At the very least, we would request that the new house in the subdivided lot comply in all respects with the zoning code with no exceptions, particularly with regard to any front, side, and backyard setback requirements and building height restrictions. Thank you for your consideration of our concerns, David Spears and Maureen Clackham. I'll you make sure that the Shade Tree Commission gets a copy of that comment? Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so, Ed and Bob, thank you for being with us tonight. We look forward to seeing your revised plans. You're welcome. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Uh, next on the agenda is our review of our minutes from our last meeting. August 13th. What's that? The August 13th meeting. August 13th meeting, right. I was going to say that. Uh, anybody have any comments or additions or changes that you would like to see to those minutes? No? Okay. I'll make a motion we approve the minutes from the August 13th, 2020 meeting. Second. <laughs> David, second that. Uh, Kelly, roll call, please. Sure. Mr. Kabuzi? Yes. Mr. Reardon? Yes. Mr. Poynton? Yes. Mr. Shannon? Yes. Ms. Dobbs? Yes. Mr. Criotabundo? Rob, you're on mute. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and Mr. Garrett. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's about it for tonight. Anyone want, want, want to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. Sure. All in favor? Well, we have a. a, a are we, are, are we on for our next meeting, do you think, in two weeks? Well, we don't have any agenda items now, so um, it looks like we will probably next see each other on October 8th. Okay. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. Great. Good night. Thanks, all. Good night. Good night.